It's Miss Miklos here with another lecture, and today we're talking about more graphing quadratic functions. And um, we're going to go straight into example number one. And if we look here, y equals x squared plus 8x minus 1. And this definitely looks a little bit different than the problems that we worked with on our last lecture. In fact, you may remember our vertex form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And if we look at this, this is definitely not in vertex form. And you may be wondering what the problem is, and the problem here is that I have both an x squared and an x term. So this is the form we need in order to graph. So we need to figure out what we need to do in order to get it back into vertex form. We are going to be using completing the square, which we learned in a previous lecture, in order to change all these quadratic functions into vertex form. And the way that we're going to do it is slightly different than we learned last time. And the first thing we're going to do is bump our constant over. So we're actually going to write our x squared and our x term in parentheses and move the constant over um, just so it's not in the parentheses. Second thing we're going to do is factor out our leading coefficient. So in our previous lecture, we divided when we, by the leading coefficient when we were trying to solve by CTS. Here, we're just going to factor it out. Then we're going to create a perfect square trinomial just like last time, and we, by taking the middle coefficient, dividing by 2, and squaring it. Once I know what I'm adding, we're going to have to go, go ahead and balance our equation and add that constant to both sides of our equation. Then, finally, our last two set steps, we are going to factor the perfect square trinomial, and then we are going to go ahead and isolate y. So these are really the steps that we're going to go through as we're getting any function into vertex form. And I think it's a lot easier to look at when we actually have an equation in front of us. So why don't we go back and look at example number one. And now that we know how to get it into vertex form, we can go ahead and find all the characteristics and sketch a graph. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is go ahead and bump my constant over to the other side. So all I'm doing is I'm moving that negative one over. Next thing, I need to factor out our leading coefficient, which in this case is a one, so that's honestly not going to change anything. So we're going to figure out what to add to make this into a perfect square trinomial. So I'm taking this eight, because that's our middle coefficient, and I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. So I'm going to add 16 to one side. And if I add 16 to one side, I know I also have to add 16 to the other side. So now what we're going to do, I need to go ahead and factor this perfect square trinomial. And I know this should be x plus 4 squared. And we talked about this um, in a previous lecture. But 4 works because 4 times 4 is 16. 4 plus 4 is 8. The shortcut when we know it's a perfect square trinomial, this number is always half of that middle coefficient. Now, to isolate y, I actually need to subtract 16 from both sides. So I get y equals the quantity x plus 4 squared minus 17, which I made this a super ugly one for us to graph but that's okay. So now we're going to go ahead and find our characteristics. Our vertex would be negative 4, negative 17. We know that it's going up and it's normal because our a value is 1. And lastly, my line of symmetry would be x equals negative 4. So on my graph here, I'm going to pretend um, I know it already says these labels, but we're acting like each of these is worth 2. So I went to the left 4 and down 17. Since it's up and normal, I'm then going to go up 1 and over 1 in each direction. And then I'm going to draw my U and draw my line of symmetry. And my hope today is that we're really good at this and this. And really, our new concept is getting it into vertex form. So just to recap, I bump my constant over. Factor out the leading coefficient, 
And then I need to create a perfect square trinomial. So I'm taking this middle coefficient, dividing it by 2 and squaring it, and I'm adding it to both sides. We factored and isolated y by subtracting that constant over here to both sides. Moving on to number two, number two is a little bit tougher because we notice we have a leading coefficient other than one. Once again, I notice that I need to complete the square because I have an x squared and I have an x term. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and bump my constant over. And this time I actually do need to factor out. So I'm factoring out the leading coefficient, and I need to think, when I factor 2 out of 2x squared, I am left with x squared. When I factor a 2 out of negative 12x, I'm left with negative 6x. Notice I did not factor anything out of the 3, because that was not inside my parentheses. So the next thing I need to do is figure out what am I going to add in here, so I'm going to take that negative 6 and divide it by 2, which gives me negative 3, and I'm going to square it. So I'm actually going to add 9. Now, since I added 9 to one side, I know that I need to balance it. However, I didn't really add just 9. What I actually added was 2 times 9. And we know 2 times 9 is 18, so that is what I need to add to the other side. So, it is important whenever I have a leading coefficient, I need to distribute to figure out what to add to the other side of the equation. When I factor this, I get x minus 3 squared, and I know that I need to subtract 18 from both sides, so I get y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 15. So when I go ahead and find my four characteristics, we know our vertex is 3, negative 15. We know that our a value is 2, so it's going up. And it's also skinny. And my line of symmetry would be x equals 3. Now graphing exactly the same as we did in our previous lecture, so let's go ahead and graph this. So this time I scaled my graph, um, so each one was worth 3. And if you guys ever scale stuff, which I made up these problems off the top of my head, so that's why it's being weird, but um, on the worksheet it's never going to be this strange, and on quizzes and tests it definitely will not be either. But um, if you do scale this, we definitely need to make sure that we mark that it's scaled. Okay, here I moved to the left 3 and down 15. Since it was up and skinny, I went up 2 and over 1 in both directions to make my U shape. I think number 3 is one of the toughest ones we're going to have to deal with because we have this lovely fraction. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to start just like every other problem by bumping that plus 7 over. And then I notice we have that leading coefficient of 1 third. So I think it's pretty easy to figure out what, what we're left with when I take 1 third out of 1 third x squared. And remember what we're really doing is 1 third x squared divided by 1 third is x squared. And a good way to double check this is to redistribute. So I need to think, what am I left with when I take 1 third out of negative 2x? And when I do that, it's like m dividing by 1 third or multiplying by 3. So I'm actually left with negative 6x. And let's just double check this. 1 third times negative 6x is negative 2x. So now I'm taking that negative 6, I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it, so I'm adding 9. My square looks kind of weird there. Oh well. And now I need to think, what should I add to the other side? And I know 1 third times 9 is 3. So I'm actually adding 3 to the other side. So I get y equals 1 third times x minus 3 squared plus 4. When I list out my characteristics, my vertex is 3, 4. It is up, it is 
fatty. And my line of symmetry is x equals 3. So now let's go ahead and sketch a graph of this. I finally made one that is semi-easy to graph. So I went to the right 3 and up 4. Then I went up 1 and over 2 in both directions, drew my u, and drew my line of symmetry. So this would be the parabola for the equation y equals 1 3rd x squared minus 2x plus 7. To be honest, it really doesn't get any more difficult than these. Okay, it's very, very repetitious. We just need to keep doing the same thing again and again until we understand how to do it. So we're actually just going to do one final example of this. So our final example, let's just go straight into it here. So I'm going to go ahead and bump that one over. So that negative 3x squared plus 6x is inside my parentheses. And then I'm going to factor out the negative 3. When I factor out negative 3, I'm left with x squared minus 2x. And it is minus instead of plus. And let's just check. Negative 3 times negative 2x makes 6x. So if I'm going to take negative 2, divide it by 2, and square it, it becomes 1. However, I know that 1 is like a negative 3, so I actually eat, need to add negative 3 to the other side. So I get y equals negative 3 times x minus 1 squared plus 4. So now if I'm listing my characteristics, our vertex is 1, 4. It's going down and it is skinny. And lastly, our line of symmetry is x equals 1. So on every single problem we do, it's really important that we list our four characteristics. On every quiz, on every test, you guys need to have these four in order to get credit. So now let's go ahead and graph it. So there's a graph at 1, 4. Since it was down and skinny, I went down 2 and over 1 in both directions. And then I drew my parabola and sketched my line of symmetry. So really, the only new thing we're learning today is how to transform this into vertex form. Everything else is exactly the same. So just keep practicing if you're struggling on this. I'm excited to watch your walkthroughs and how you do.